Okay, show me Gemulator. Okay, well, again, you've copied the Gemulator software to the hard drive of your PC. Okay. And so we just go into the directory called Gemulator and we run the Gemulator program. So now the Gemulator software is loading into the PC, mm -hmm. which tells it how to read in the ROM chips from the board. Mm -hmm. And okay, I'll just tell it to do, uh, let's see, cost 1.4. And you I do color. like that, the way you can choose your toss. Right. Uh, let's see, we can do color and monochrome. I'll just tell it to do monochrome. And we just reboot. And there is toss 1.4. That's unbelievable. In monochrome. I feel like I'm looking at an ST screen and it's up on a PC. Oh, I should actually put a disk in there. It's the same. Right. It's the real toss 1.4 running on your PC. In fact, we can do the desktop info, you can see it's the TOS 1.4 about screen. Yeah, I recognize it. So this is monochrome mode. Right. So I've also seen from your ad here about using color and monochrome at the same time and even multitasking ST software with PC software. Okay, that has to be done under Windows. Um, see, when Gemulator is running from DOS, it, it's the only program that can run. Right, just like um, anything. Right. So if you have Microsoft Windows, you can do some cool stuff. And let me show you that. OK, what do we have here? Well, what I just did right now is actually, from Windows, ran two gemulators at the same time. I just clicked on the gemulator icon twice. Mm -hmm. And I booted up one of the gemulators in monochrome. And that's the monochrome ST window you see there. Right. Now the second gemulator is running in medium resolution. <laughs> and we can also put it into a window. Excellent. Now, you're wondering yeah, why the colors there, yeah. are weird. OK, the colors are weird because the ST uses a certain color palette, mm -hmm. black text and a green background. Right. Um, under Windows, Windows uses a different color palette. It use, uses different colors. Mm -hmm. So when you try to display your ST desktop on the Windows desktop, the Windows colors take over. And so Windows puts in its color palette. I've seen that happen before. Yeah. That's why Gemulator, if you're running it in color, it's best to run it full screen. Okay. Monochrome, you can get away with running inside a window because black and white, whether it's gem colors or windows colors, is still going to be black and white. That's great. So not only can you run different versions of TOS in the same session, you have monochrome and color applications running at the same time on the same desktop, and you don't even have to reboot Windows, never mind change anything about the card. Correct. That's great. Yeah, what I want to show you is the ability to transfer graphics files over. Um, RDST is a public domain DEGA compatible program. Uh, it's just a drawing program. So let's say you're using DEGA. Mm -hmm. um, we have a graphics image here. Let me just quickly uh, make something interesting. All right. I'll just whip up a graphics file. Okay. Okay. So there's a picture that we painted with the ST software. Right. Which you can save out as a DEGA file. And right. you've, you've just loaded it into your paint program. And you want to transfer it over to the PC. Right. So a PC paint program can use it. Under Windows, if you press print screen, which I'm doing now, mm -hmm. the screen flickers for a brief instant. What that does is it takes the current screen and saves it to the Windows clipboard. You can now go to a Windows program and simply paste in, We're back in publisher. that image. Right. We're back in Microsoft Publisher right now, which is a desktop publishing program. And I'll simply say edit paste. And it goes through and pastes that picture right in. Now you can't can even do this if you were to own both an ST and a PC. Right. You really have integrated the two together. That's amazing. And this is, in fact, how I did the ad here. Uh, this is simply a screen dump of the Windows desktop that I pasted into Publisher while it was running Gemulator. So you can do cool things like that. You can take all your Neochrome and Prism Paint and Dega pictures paste them into your PC program so that you can then convert them into PC file formats. Okay, Derek, I have a bunch of disks here and I was wondering about the hassle of different types of disks. Like, can I use single-sided and double-sided disks? Oh yes, that's no problem. Any disk that you can read on an ST, whether it's single-sided or double-sided, nine-sector, ten-sector, oh, really? twisted, untwisted, even the 1.4 meg floppies oh, yeah. that are used in PCs, 
can be read by Gemulator. Oh, so I can save my stuff on these too. Yes, because TOS does understand 1.4 meg right. floppy formats. It's just that your ST can't format those disks. But oh. TOS does know how to read those disks. What about my hard drive? Do I have to make a special partition for nope. ST stuff I want to save? This isn't like a Mac emulator. Because the ST and PCs use the, the exact same disk format, you can use the same disk partitions. Basically, you don't have to reformat hmm. anything on your hard drive. You don't have to reformat your floppies. Any file that you save with your PC can be read by the ST software or vice versa. Great. Okay, now I've watched you play around with this with different tosses and color and monochrome and it actually seems to be working pretty fast. It doesn't seem to be slowed down from, you know, compared to using a regular ST. I know I used to have the uh, PC Ditto on an ST and it was trying to emulate the PC software and it was just so slow. It was only frustrating to use. There wasn't really much useful I could do with it. Right, because PC Ditto was emulating the very first original IBM PC, the 8088 based PC, but which uses runs. That anymore. No, of course not, because th it runs about 50 times slower than a 486. So PC Ditto was actually emulating machine 50 times slower than this machine, and it wasn't even emulating it at, at full speed. It was emulating it at about one quarter the speed oh, that's of one fiftieth the speed of this. That's so why PC Ditto mm -hmm. is so slow. So what kind of speed do you get out of out of Gemulator? Well, Gemulator. The reason PC Ditto was so slow is because the 68000 chip, compared to the chip that it was emulating, which was the 8088, mm -hmm. was not much faster. And you need a much faster chip to emulate a slower chip because you have the, all this translation. Well, that would take some time. You have to take the, the program that you're, you're translating, figure out what to translate it into, and that takes up time. That's why to emulate the 68000, you need a fast chip like a 386 or a 486. That's why Gemulator won't run on a 286 or a slower right. machine. Um, but as it turns out, a 486 chip is much faster than the 68000 mm -hmm. chip in your, in, your, in your Atari ST. And so I can actually run Atari ST software at full speed on the 486. Oh, really? So that's impressive. What would happen if I had a 386? Uh, a 386 is about half the speed of a 486. So a, 40, or, sorry, a 386 would give you about half the speed of the Atari ST. But there are ways... You can, you can work around that. For example, if you run the Quick ST software accelerator or mm -hmm. Turbo ST or Warp 9 or any other software accelerator, you will actually get the same speed up on Gemulator that you get on top of that. Right, that you get on the normal ST. So if Quick ST doubled the speed of a program on a regular ST, it'll actually double it on Gemulator. Oh. So many programs will run at full speed on Gemulator if you run them with Quick ST. If you have a 486 and you run Quick ST, then of course you'll get the much faster accelerated right. speed. So all the accessories and things that are designed for an ST will also work with Gemulator. Correct. You don't have to worry about auto folder programs or accessories not working. Quick ST is a program that it, it is an auto folder program and it, it does a lot of weird things to the ST and it still runs fine. Um, mm -hmm. All of your major um, auto folder programs, Hotwire, um, DC desktop and accessories like Multidesk, will all run fine. And in fact, I'll, I'll give you a dem demo of those in a few minutes. Great. I just booted up PageStream here, which mm -hmm. is a very popular program on the Atari ST. And again, PageStream works quite great. Excellent. So if I need a 386 or 486, isn't that really going to be more expensive than just getting an ST? Because I know STs are getting very cheap now. Uh, STs are getting cheap. However, PCs have been getting cheaper at a much faster rate. If you look at the price of a PC five mm -hmm. years ago, what you pay for a very, very slow 286 based machine and what you pay for a 486 right now, you're actually paying less money now. Really. If you look in a magazine like Computer Shopper mm -hmm. and you look at the prices of 486 machines, um, of course I'm kind of partial to Gateway because I own a Gateway. Right. If you look at Gate Gateway's price for a 486, they're charging $2,495. $2,500 for this machine. 8 megabytes of memory, 200 meg, meg hard drive, 200 meg, that's a lot. Yeah, it's actually more than you really need. You mm. could get away with a 486SX with a 80 meg hard drive, which mm. you can get for about 